theme song here. Shout out to Moon Taxi, our Moon own Taxi. personal what if band. We love Moon Go Taxi. Go buy their song. Go buy their record. Yes, Wait. the whole thing. The whole record. People still buy records. Did I just do that? You <laughs> did. You did. Hey, but hey, speaking of buying, uh, we're gonna talk turn about money. Down. You kids turn that music <laughs> down there. I'm listening to my Alec Coltrane records in the dark with a glass of whiskey. Oh, so shut up. <laughs> okay, Sean's very old, maybe a little drunk. We'll find out. But we're talking about money today. We're talking about buying. We might talk about buying records or not. If you're a record store, then yes, we're going to talk about buying records. But um, we're going to dive in. So a new way to think about business finances. But we were just talking off camera. Where does finances fit in the harmonious architecture. You've heard us talk about it. The 10 disciplines every business needs to master in order to grow and scale your business efficiently. Finances, ironically enough, is not a standalone discipline, which might make a lot of people upset. Sean, why did you do that to the people? <laughs> so, How dare I? When we partner with fractional CFOs, they're like, you, we're in the C-suite. How are we not a discipline? I'll tell you why. Um, in the same way that air is not a part of home for the environment that people are working in, because it is there, it is a truth. It is like music, math, it is what it is universally everywhere. And you can't argue nuances artistically the way you can in navigation. There's a lot of room to play there. And so I need to lock down what we're going to do for people there because the architecture is clearing up a lot of the confusion so that you can see that there is valuable space to be claimed inside the 10. So strategic planning, you can, you could lose yourself in the traditional corporatized ideas of strategic planning and completely miss where all the leverage is. So we have to pare it all down. We have to say, yes, this is a true thing. We have to pare it down to its essence and then tell you how to apply it in a brand new way. Human resource management. God, you could drown in the bad advice out there. Bad advice vis-a-vis -vis how your people, finding them, getting them to stay, motivating them, keeping yourself out of legal troubles. I've, I've sat in rooms where coaches for entrepreneurs are telling you, hey, here's a faster way to hire people. Here's a way to vet people and ask them. Here's the questions I ask. Like everyone was a was a federal crime or a state crime, like all kinds of stuff. I'm just saying, like, good Lord. So there's all kinds of bad stuff I've got to unpack and keep you from by disrupting you to wake you up from following all that, say, let's get it back to its essence. These are the things where you will get this 20% of activity will give you 80% of the leverage. Please just come here and do this. Paring down all the stuff. I don't have to do that for finance because it is what it is. The math is the path. There is no confusion. You may not understand how to read a particular document, Right. But you, I'm not, it is what it is. Similarly, the law is where, what the law is. Well, because as a lawyer, I know legal has a seat at the table. Legal's in the C suite, or should be. Legal is up there. Right. Chief. And if you, if you break that down even further into compliance, uh, then, um, I mean, if this is conscriptive. It, it doesn't need to be defined. We must do these things or we are in violation. Therefore, we got to do them. And I've worked a lot with compliance departments. Love it because it it is what it is. Un, unconvoluted. And it can exist there. And I don't need to disrupt it because it is a child of, in a taxonomy, like we're building here, it is a child of some of these other amorphous disciplines. It has been fully formed. And that's why I don't tell you to do finances yourself. You should know your numbers. But get an expert who knows that and can do that for you. Get an accountant, right? Get somebody to do that. Just like get someone to be your lawyer. You can buy templates. 
you can use chat GPT and think now you're a junior associate and you understand the law enough to do the things. Get someone who understands that thing. It is fully formed. You understand what it is. Stop monkeying around with it. And so when we talk about finances, you're like, gosh, well, where is it? What a slight finances. No. Beautiful finance experts. I, you should have a seat at the table. It is a beautiful thing that you're doing. Very necessary. But it is a child of, we're talking about the taxonomy, other disciplines. It's a child of navigation because I got to know where we're going. And it's a child uh, and and turning the dial of navigation will impact the financial metrics. But they're metrics we're talking about. We need to analyze the real essence of finance is the analysis of the numbers. What are they telling me? And then what you do with them is make strategic decisions up in navigation, allocation decisions in like for home or opera or right or order where you're operating your value chain, those are allocations of those numbers based on your strategic direction in navigation. Uh, and then, and modify, right? So there's other, so the, so the real parent of finance is analyze. Do I know what I'm looking at? Do I understand the numbers? And then how am I allocating those funds based on my navigation? And so, what an amazing question, Brandon. I didn't think we were going to get to this, like the sub levels, but yes, there may be people out there saying, well, where's my thing? Why isn't my thing on there? Why isn't compliance on there? If you want to get it. So, well, because we put that in risk and defense and it is a subset of order. We must do these things because this client, there is this outside force that's saying this. So it is order. There's no navigation there. <laughs> Unless you're saying our strategy is to not, be sued or be put on strategy, right? Be shut down. Okay. So it's not really like navigations and uncle. You only see like once, once every five years at the family reunion for that. Uh, but compliance is absolutely a function of risk and defense and order. This is what we do for these people. Therefore, now that we have this federal government contract, now that we oh, we went and got ourselves a DOD contract. Hooray. Our grandchildren are going to be rich. We'll feast forever on this huge DOD contract. And then here's the manual, the compliance manuals that come with it. There's three of them, and they're this size each. Compliance has now become, and they go, see, we were this important all along. Well, <laughs> When compliance shows up because of the marriage of those other elements, it becomes a massive deal. And when it isn't by because of the nature of your business, I don't, I don't know that it needs to be there. And this is how then we can make these decisions as to what really is going on in your business and where it sits and which of these disciplines have themselves or their children at the table. That's how you have yes. a nice Thanksgiving. So most, most small businesses do not have a legal department, probably don't even have a lawyer on retainer. They may know one, but they don't have a compliance department. They don't have all of these things. So the way, the way we're thinking about business finances is really how we're talking about what it touches throughout the value chain process. So you mentioned navigation. What are, what are we, where are we going as a company? Uh, and what, how will that influence what we buy? both what we buy to produce product and fulfill the value chain, yeah. what we buy to fill our offices, the paper we use for our printers, all of this different stuff. The home, the, the, do yeah. I have the resources that I need? So the, the new way to think about your finances is it is not just the big three financial statements, the balance sheet, the profit and loss, the statement of cash flows. Those are, those are good. Those are accounting documents, but, and it's not even a, a financial strategy, but I actually did have an interesting conversation um, on our podcast yesterday with a guest who she specializes in helping solopreneurs and newer entrepreneurs understand their finances and have a financial strategy. So what I was surprised to learn, and you may be surprised too, is that most entrepreneurs don't even look at their numbers because oh they God. don't understand what it impacts. And that blew me away. So let, can we unpack that for a minute? And that's why... I didn't call this metrics. I didn't call it measurement. 
I didn't call it OKRs. I didn't call it any of that. I called it analyze for a reason, because your ability, a bit, the essence of analyze or analysis is understanding, looking at it, understanding what it means so that then you can take action. If it's not that, then, and, and you're looking at la lagging indicators like, what's hitting, hitting my bank account and you're driving everything with a revenue or earnings lens, you're going to start making the wrong decisions. You're going to violate your core values. You're going to have, you're going to automate the wrong processes. You're going to violate the architecture in lots of ways because you've taken some metrics and, and made some of them supreme to this entire architecture and your venture, right? Because you, you hyper-focused on it, on a lagging indicator. And so that's why with the way we look at finance un, un, under analysis, what's happening? Do I understand it? Do I know what dials affect it? And then what actions am I going to take in order to serve the community that I am serving, which is how the, that revenue is coming in? Right. Okay. And so that's just a different, that is, that is, that is everything. That is the power of it. And just looking at it in that way. Yeah. So can we talk about then maybe, and I, I have some history with this on how to turn those lagging indicators into leading indicators for your finances. So let's, let's tee this up here. Um, in, in my previous business, I, I knew my numbers so well, so analyze, but in, in terms of finances, I would review my P&L on a monthly basis and then obviously on a yearly basis too, but I knew the percentages of where every dollar that came in was going out statistically in the past. So that's a lagging indicator, right? What I did with that information was then I could turn around and forecast that forward by turning those percentages into cost of goods, let's say. So if I knew that for every widget that went out the door, 32% was cost of goods, then I knew while we were pricing an invoice for a customer, if I was able to meet or exceed that percentage, I could influence the amount of profit that came through the door and the amount of wiggle room we had for uh, competitive contracts for sponsorships for things like that and giving back to the community. So I was able to say, okay, instead of just looking at my numbers in the past and trying to make better decisions in the future and hope they influenced, I, I was able to use one of those numbers specifically to influence profit. So is that the case across the board? No, but it's again, a new way to think about your business finances. That was revolutionary to most people in that industry. No one was doing that. So that's the kind of stuff where if you use the numbers and it, you analyze them correctly, you can actually influence your future. And so this is the power of then understanding that these, these metrics are drivers. You have to understand what your drivers, financial drivers, what metrics. So going back to parents, parents and children, some of the measures you're looking at are aggregated numbers and they have children and those children are where the leverage are it, it leverages or i should say it's the inverse they're the parents of right they're the children of these things you're looking at parents of them are the real drivers and so these two things are combining to make this measure that you're looking at and the effort to change those two drivers are not equal and now you know that if i turn this dial if i want to if i want to change this number i could turn this dial 150 times and get that result, or I can turn this half a click this way and get the same result because the leverage is different. That's how you can start making decisions to what goes on your calendar and where are you spending your time. If Brandon and I know that uh, it takes, three, I'm making stuff up, three hours to get one of us booked on a podcast, and that podcast is going to result in depending on this many listeners, that we're going to get 100 people to take the bet and consider joining our community. That is a different dial than we're going to put together a stage. We're going to put together a room where there's going to be 15 people in it. 
and it's going to take us days to prepare uh lots of effort and, and, and around the whole thing lots and lots of hours burned and of but of those 15 10 are going to actually come into the community we have to weigh all of that the, there's calculus there that has to happen to say what's the best use of our time and then you got to get really refined on well so who is it that we're really trying to get in the rooms and what people what people there are in the room what people are in the general listening in the room and how big of ease of a fit is it going to be and so maybe this is more valuable than this one that's when you're starting to get really refined we can have those conversations because we understand that all drivers are not equal, all activities are not equal, all things that you're doing do not pour into this lattice work of drivers and financial outcomes in the same way. And when you have that level of understanding, it becomes very easy to make strategic decisions and make and make tactical decisions as to where you're going to spend your time to have the maximum benefit with the least amount of effort for your business. Yeah, and so let's have you watched the show The Office? I have, uh, yes. Okay. So let's use, let's use the office and think about this from that perspective. I think a lot of people can relate. So finance was Kevin, Oscar and Angela, right? They were in the back corner. Nobody likes finance and they got upset every, any time that someone in the office spent money, they were so pigeonholed into their thing and their little corner of the office that, you know, nobody wants to deal with them. And that's how business owners, I think, typically look at finances. It's it's over there and we don't really want to touch it. And then on the flip side, when you do have to touch it, you talk to your accountant or your CPA. The problem is when you pigeonhole, when you silo, you don't understand what else it touches and your CPA for sure does not understand all those different dials and the nuances yeah. that Sean just talked about. So we'll leave you with this. Sean, do you know the best way that someone can understand how to look at their finances differently starting immediately get help no take the bad <laughs> let's figure that's... out what's going on and we're the help <laughs> it don't say no uh right answer yes get yes, help yes and <laughs> get help from from an accountant from a, an attorney from an advisor from a business coach yeah but also the, the purpose of the bad is to see oh. where all the things touch and and what's lacking. So what we're able to do when you take this assessment, you'll get your your free. It's a free assessment. You'll get the report on the back end, and it'll tell you what are the areas in your business that are lacking. And from that, you can see based on the questions we ask, where finances are showing up and where you may need to look at your finances differently. So we've given you the framework of what it touches. This assessment will show you specifically in your business how you need to think about your finances differently. So there's anybody can give you tactics and strategies and whatnot. And the, the best way to make a million dollars in the next 30 seconds. Awesome. Love those people. They're all scam artists. This will tell you concretely what's going on in your business right now. Yes. Dad. So as always, I'm very nice to the other scam artists out there, but <laughs> I'm serious. Go take the bad. This has been awesome. Um, Sean, we're headed off to the inner circle. We yeah. have a room filling up of people who are excited and growing their businesses. We're getting ready for 2024. We're in the middle of strategic planning. We got people going places. How pumped are you to bring these people with us on this journey? I'm really excited. There's a lot going on. You can feel the energy of people doing planning in a different way and getting super excited. They're challenging each other's goals. They're, they're challenging, challenging each other to do more. So it, it's, it has the feeling like everyone has skin in the game for each other's objectives. It's happening beautifully. It's amazing. It's a community of disruptors all empowering each other to move forward. And we love that. So we're headed off there. We'll see you next week on this show, the Inner Circle Preview Show. Wherever you're watching it, we'll be back next week. Same time, same place. And we're going to head off to the Inner Circle. Hopefully we'll see you there soon.